Hey, good morning. Good morning. It has been one year that you and I have been living in the yurt and doing this uh, Canadian adventure. Yeah, it's crazy to think, just one year. <laughs> How many people, when they first heard of watching us, when they first heard that we were going to do this, uh, living off the grid, they uh, trolled us big time and doubted us and said we wouldn't last a week? Yeah, they, a lot of people did. And a lot of people said that our yurt wasn't going to stay standing, but boom, <laughs> it's up. <laughs> you have a lot of attitude with that. <laughs> but a lot of support as well and a lot of people that love what we're doing and oh, a ton. love to watch the way more the than the haters yeah okay so first of all kudos to Nicole for following me on this crazy adventure <laughs> this was your idea right no it was not my idea <laughs> we started making videos about our off-grid journey here living in a yurt we had 8,000 subscribers now we're approaching a quarter million yeah yeah whoop, whoop. in a year very crazy I know a lot of folks are new. I get the same questions over and over again, like what kind of dogs are Puma and Kai? Yeah. How do you guys shower? How do you go to the bathroom? Why did you agree to say yes to live with me in a yurt? <laughs> and how was the process of picking out the yurt and seeing it for the first time? We picked a yurt because it's a pretty quick structure to put up. Yep. And we really liked the round feature of it. We wanted to live in something not too big, but have it be open, less what? resources. Talk about that, less resources, what do you mean? Less materials than a regular, you know, regular house. We're gonna live in that van, and we're gonna live in one of these yurts. Yes. So Let's go. go. Check it out. Picking the yurt was an amazing experience. It was really cool. Cause you um, got to go and walk in three different kinds of yurts that were already all decked out on the inside. And yeah, it was designed. really nice uh, working with specific yurts and picking out the yurt and designing it on their website. It kind of all made it seem real. Uh, so that was really nice. I, I Cause we designed our own yurt on the website and then we went there in person to see some of their model yurts. Yeah, and then they do such a really good job of wrapping it and shipping it and all that. Well, we picked it up ourselves, but it was really cool unwrapping it. It was like, you know, it was like Christmas. Yeah. And uh, you guys will see that in the video. I get a little excited. <laughs> what do you think about that being a full-on home there behind us on the ground? I mean, it looks awesome. Yeah. yeah. You were so excited to unwrap it. I was very excited. I was maybe a little too excited. <laughs> yeah. So what's the size of our yurt? What yurt are we living in? We are living in a 30 foot yurt. 30 foot diameter. 30 foot diameter, yeah. And then from the ground level to the dome is like 15 feet. Yeah. So it feels like it has vaulted ceilings. For sure, oh yeah. And which makes it nice for us because we have a loft. So it makes the loft feel, you know, fairly big and open. You say that you like the yurt because it connects you with nature. How's that? You hear every sound. You hear the rain, you hear the birds, when the birds come out. Uh, like we, it's almost springtime, and so that you can kind of start to hear the birds. And you don't notice it during the winter, and so you're like, oh, the birds are back. And we're sitting in the yurt by the warm fire. Yeah. Um, you hear the, the wind, you hear the rain. I mean, frogs. The frogs, you hear everything. But the rain sometimes can be deafening where we can't even hear each other's talk. <laughs> yeah, we're like yelling at each other. So it definitely makes you feel connected to nature and one thing that we did is we incorporated a lot of windows to mm. our yurt which was nice so then we're able to look outside you know in every direction of the yurt which i like okay but living in the yurt wasn't our first house um we decided to convert a van that we got a mitsubishi delica into a kind of a mini rv yeah <laughs> that was fun <laughs> so living in that van for uh, a month or two how was that it was challenging. Okay, come on out. Let's go get a mattress. All right. <laughs> when we got the van, it already had the back all open. There was no seats, nothing. So that was really nice. So it made it easier for us to just kind of put a little bed platform in there. And then we just got a, a pillow top, like a memory foam pillow top, yep. and put it on there and bada boom. <laughs> Ah, it's perfect. It's really sturdy. Thank you. We got some totes to go underneath to store our food. Yep. That's about it. <laughs> Boom, home. Yeah. And then the most challenging part of this entire journey, I think, for us, but especially for you, is what part of it? Um, not being close to my family and my friends. I'm a huge people person and I'm really close with my family. Starting over. Um, what exactly does that mean? 
There's absolutely nothing on this property except for what you see, trees, sticks, and mud, and rocks, and dirt, and soil, and all of that. There's no shower, there's no toilet, there's no house, there's nothing, absolutely nothing. It is raw. Jake and I decided that we are going to build a yurt. So yeah, so here we are, starting over episode one, off-grid or living off-grid with Jake and Nicole. We decided to drive to Como Rebi in the winter time during like a winter blizzard. <laughs> yeah. How was the drive up? Oh, it was so scary. Of course, friends and family, but the hardest part for you about this whole journey has been the boat access only nature of this property. Yes, it's really stressful. We brought a carport here to get ourselves out of the rain, our van, belongings, and the yurt but they had to come by barge on the ocean. So what was that like? It was really stressful and it was really fascinating to see how the locals do that here. Um, but yeah, it was, it was different. It was, you had to think differently of how to get things here. We went from like a moving truck to the barge and then we had to unload everything on this dock. And then we still had to get everything from the dock to our property yeah. at night until midnight. It was, yeah, and then <laughs> kind of scary we, actually. It was scary. <laughs> when we finally got here, where were we living at that time? In the van. But on this old abandoned like dirt road. Oh yeah, we were just on this road. And then we had to quickly get building the basic necessities of life, like compost toilets, um, outdoor showers, things like that. Yeah. Okay, so first thing that we had to do when we were here was get the yurt here, get the carport here, get our van here that we can live in, and then get a boat. Then get a boat. So what kind of boat did we get? We got the Stryker Hunter Jet 420. Yeah, 13 yeah. and a half foot. <laughs> it's got a 20 horsepower outboard engine on it, outboard motor. And Stryker's cool because they're a British Columbian company, so we, uh, on the way up here, we, that's when we picked it up. And the Striker is kind of like a little BMW convertible. It's like fast, puts you right down there with the elements. And oh yeah, for sure. We've used it for almost everything. I mean, we've brought everything that we've needed with that Striker boat to this property. Yeah. It's a super nice boat and it's been very helpful compared to the first boat that we got that we thought was gonna work but kind of didn't end up working. So this we boat kind of saved our butts and it's been great. It's been an awesome boat. Yeah. So we're still in our first month. We have our boat. We're here at the property, but the property is raw land property. How many acres do we have here? Uh, we have eight acres. Yep. Uh, and right now we're living on four. Yeah, we haven't even done anything with the other four acres. We haven't even done anything with like an acre. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's so much. It's very difficult to get into the properties, right? Yeah. Oh, They're yeah. heavily forested. They've been logged three times over the past 100 to 200 years and the forest, because of the logging, had grown back very dense, like dreadlocks. Yeah, it's very sad. So you and I couldn't even barely get into the property at first. It's and funny, because we had this like whole plan mapped out of where we wanted everything to go, and the yurt and everything, and then we get here and we're like, our whole plan out the door, and we had to be like, well, we're using the logging road, <laughs> which yeah. we didn't even know existed. Talk about that, the logging road. What does that mean? When the loggers came in, they just brought in a bunch of gravel and they decimated the forest and putting in roads that would help them get the logs out. So it's just... They always set up a quarry and then they use the rocks from that quarry to set up these old logging roads that are six to eight feet tall yeah. above the forest floor. Yeah. So you and I found that there was a fork in one of those old logging roads on our property and we decided to clear it and make that the solid foundation for our yurt. Which 
turned out perfect. It turned out perfect. It's turned yeah. out really nice. Yeah. We're standing on it right now. <laughs> <laughs> but it still needed a lot of work, right? It still had a lot of alder, a lot of salmon berry, and still had to be clear, which took us weeks. Oh yeah, it was still very bushwhacky and You did the first one. <laughs> You're so cute. The one down, a lot more to go. Yeah. A uh, sheet metal waterproof garage carport. It's 30 feet long. It's gonna go all the way to about here and stop about here. Behind here we have um, our first big project, I guess, going on. Um, we're putting out or putting up a carport to protect us from the rain. We have like a window of like a whole week of no rain, so we're like really trying to utilize this beautiful blue sky. I mean. Our whole life here getting set up is about timing and stages. So stage one was like cutting a path into the forest. We did that. Well, stage one was getting the stuff here. We got that and waterproofed it. Stage two is getting a place cut in. But I mean, it's going to rain here and we are so lucky to only have one night of snow. The rest has been sunny. We've got to have rain protection. And we got an easy build structure from a company called Easy Build Structures in Vancouver. And it's a, basically a carport, a covered um, sheet metal garage. You weren't convinced that the carport was necessary for this adventure, but I thought we were going to need it. What do you think about the carport? I think I was wrong, <laughs> for sure. We definitely needed it. I just think at the time I really wanted the yurt to go up first, and we had to take our time and, yeah. and uh, put the carport up first, which was kind of frustrating, but in the long run, obviously, it really made our journey and <laughs> living experience Impossible. way better, yeah. Carport was up, we had a sanctuary from the rain, and then what did we start doing? We worked on the yurt platform and then worked on the yurt. We finished it, it's kind of dark, getting a little laid out. I'm so excited and I'm really excited because this means we get to start the yurt. I look up to the sky and I wonder what's beyond. The to begin with, you were so excited to start the yurt platform. Yeah. But what's the job that you hated the most of everything we ever did? Doing the yurt platform. And what were some of the reasons? Why did you hate it so much? Just everything. We had to level out the ground. I've never done any construction before ever. So I thought it was going to be easy peasy. Let's just put this thing up. Yeah. Done. Let's start the yurt. No. We didn't have any power. So all of our tools were battery tools we had to charge up with the sun or with anybody we could network with. And, uh, we also were able to turn our car into a little bit of a charging system. Yeah. We are here in the Canadian wilderness and it became very challenging even to just walk around because the ground is very unstable. You can't even walk around. You made a lot of progress. You were working until like eight o'clock. <laughs> but now at least there's enough clear where we can measure. Yeah. Oh, 
for the blooper reel. <laughs> you got it. Good job. Number one, we were battling bugs. Yeah, the bugs were ridiculous. The videos that we made could not show what kind of bugs came out first. Like these small black gnats. Yeah. That would like attack our head. Like our hairline. Yeah, and they'd, like it was just ridiculous. Especially if we wore a hat. And then, then came the mosquitoes. And I feel like you had better because you had long hair, so your hair kind of like kept them away as you're blocking bugs. They're coming again. Yeah, they're coming back. <laughs> but then it was the mosquitoes, and the mosquitoes really weren't as bad until the platform was just finishing up. Yeah, and but they attacked me hardcore. Like, I, I remember having so many mosquito bites. It was so bad. I think we had a rainstorms. good solid like week of no rain and then it started to kind of come in and then we're like, oh poop, we got to like... <laughs> yeah. So the platform took us a couple months, to be honest, didn't it? I think it just took like a month. Still, it's a long time. Yeah. especially when they're sitting on top of the four by four vertical stilt. It's great. Go. Oh my God. We're here trying to do work. It is hailing right now. It's hailing on oh us. Shit. Look, it's bouncing off the beams. Oh my can the camera even pick it up? Look. <laughs> you want my hat? God. Every time I lose, I see the floss. Every time. Your platform is done, and I think that you cheered. I think I cried. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, guess what? Yes, we finished it.
in my opinion, you really enjoyed the process of putting the yurt up because it was quick and it was easy and it was fun. I think it took like three or four days. It probably would have gotten done a lot faster if we had more people, but you're supposed was, to have five people yeah. or so for a yurt. But yeah, it was it was very emotional. I think the whole process and seeing it go up and finally have it be up was like, oh my gosh, we have a home now. Yeah, it was very surreal. Every step of the way, Nicole cheered. She cheered the lattice wall. She cheered the French doors. She cheered the <laughs> dome. You got low, I got high. <laughs> oh, it's so beautiful! <laughs> I'm really so excited! Oh my god! Here, pull this. Oh, it smells so good! Wow, you guys, this looks so good! Wow. <laughs> Several times you sat back and went, hey, I'm really building this. This is really amazing. You were really proud of yourself. Yeah, I was. Oh, it's so pretty. Did it break? No. Oh my god, it looks gorgeous. It even has a bug cover. Look at this. This is so nice. This is so nice. You like the screen? It's so nice. Like, look at this. This is a really, really nice. Now we can have the the door open all the time and no bugs. We have keys to our house. <laughs> we haven't had keys to like. Oh shit! It's broken. <laughs> oh, we have a home. Again! Oh! Oh! <laughs> I got your camera! <sighs> you have to get the angle right. Are you not entertained? <laughs> Are you not entertained? Woo! Yeah. It's still nerve wracking, like it's not secure. Like, <sighs> I would not move it. <laughs> <laughs> Are you, Are ah! you okay? <laughs> What's the problem? That was so nerve wracking. Ugh. I was concerned with the yurt's location. I didn't want to have flooding be an issue, flooding us out of the yurt. And I knew that we were going to come into a, an easy to live summer. But once winter hit, it was gonna be very rainy here. Yeah. We get 12 to 15 feet of rain a year in yeah. this temperate British Columbian rainforest. And I knew we were gonna to have to battle bugs, wind, and rain. So this logging road became the primo location we chose to put our yurt on. Mm -hmm. Thank <laughs> you.
Nice job. One more flip. I've really enjoyed living in the yurt because it does remind me of sacred geometry being inside of it. And yeah. it also kind of, it looks at one with nature. You know, it's got this nice little shape. All the local people that we've talked to that have homesteads, properties around the area that have been here their whole lives, they say how where Como Rebbe is, is kind of the bear hangout. Yes. They said, oh, where all the bears go. We're yeah. like, oh, that's great. And wolves and cougar. Yes. So from about April until about November, we were seeing bears quite often. Everywhere. And we also got to see orca several times, humpbacks and whales in the ocean, which she'll, I don't know if she'll tell you, but um, I told her in the months leading up to this adventure, you know, we're going to see whales. It's going to be so amazing. And you were like, ah, whatever. I don't, whales don't really do it for me. But <laughs> when you finally saw the whales on the boat, your, your face was, yeah, yeah <laughs> gasping. Well, it was just Especially the orca. Yeah, to, like it's our backyard pretty much, and to see them. What? And to, to see them not being a part of like a tour group or having to pay for it or hunt them down, to see them organically, I think just made it way better. Yeah. yeah. Way more magical. For sure. Again, hey. Babe. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> that was so cool. <laughs> wow. Okay, then we started to expand the deck around the yurt because the goal is to have yoga and martial arts training part of the deck, to have a cooking and cob oven part of the deck, and to have an intro mudroom part of the deck. Yes. So we started that, and what did we do to the logs to preserve them, make them less prone to rot? We Shosuki bond them? Yeah, Shosuki bond them. Yeah, so we just built a fire and then put the end part um, in the fire and to char them, which was quite fun. And to learn about all that was, was really cool. Yeah. The first thing we did with the yurt once we had it up was we put a wood stove inside of it. Yeah, it was, I mean, the wood stove that Jake found, I was skeptical and I was like, eh, whatever, it looks nice, but. I found it used. So we had to get the wood stove, which was almost a thousand pounds here by the barge. Yes, so the wood stove was up on pallets. We had to back the truck up to the pallets. Then we had to push the wood stove onto the truck. And then we had to back the truck up 
the driveway that we had to clear first. Which took us weeks. Which took us weeks. And we were able to back the truck up right to the door of the yurt and then push it in. <laughs> and then it went in quite easily. Then it was really fun putting together the stand that it's on and then lighting it for the first time was was really awesome. It was like the reward that we got, you know. Now we had the ability to stay warm, to stay dry. And to cook food on. And cook inside, which allowed us to escape the mosquitoes, which about that time, August, they became ferocious. Like I'm, yeah. I'm more nervous about mosquitoes than I am cougar or bear. <laughs> I'm not joking. We had our friend Matt visit us to help us with some of these projects and we ended up uh, going to adopt kittens. Yes. So who are our kittens and how did we come about them? We have Ginseng and Reishi and we found them on Facebook. Someone was just um, giving them away. So we were able to adopt them, which was really cool to have some animal life in the yurt besides just, well, it was just Jake and I. <laughs> And you said many times, you know, I'm not really a cat person, but let me tell you, Nicole is a cat person. <laughs> I love them, they're so funny. Yeah. They just bring a little joy to your day, especially in the morning when they do their little morning snuggles with us. Yeah. I really wanted to adopt dogs, and so we went out to get two dogs, partially because we needed the dogs as protectors against bears. We had a bear break into the yurt, which we think is a baby bear, while the mom stood outside and watched. Yeah. They broke in and stole a bunch of food from our kitchen. Luckily, didn't do too much damage, but we got dogs the next week. Yeah. So who are our dogs? We have Puma and Kai, and they are blue cattle dogs, or blue healers. They are amazing, and I love them so much. I've never, I mean, I grew up with dogs, but I've never been close to dogs like this before. Um, but I wouldn't trade them for the world. They are hilarious. Their personality is just out of this world amazing and super polite and the best dogs ever. They're so funny and uh, they're really great and I never thought to adopt brothers before or like siblings and uh, that was Jake's idea and I just thought that was a great idea. Well at first I was like oh, I'm not sure about that but um, seeing them grow up together and interact with each other is really awesome. It's been the best part. Yeah. They have each other. Yeah. They really are the best friends. They are. Yeah, the best of friends. And then we got into mushroom season and you and I were able to pick wild berries and mushrooms galore. Yes. This area, people know it as like the brush berry capital of the world and the mushroom capital of the world. We ended up locating and learning about 20 different varieties of edible mushrooms in our first year here. Yeah. Next year will be even better. Oh, so much better. I can't wait too. And for also for the jam, I've been experimenting with dyeing with different you know, plants are in the area. And so we had so many blackberries and raspberries last year. So many. So I'm really excited to use those to also dye fabric. So. Epic fog, like movie style fog. Yeah. Especially in the boat, which was really hard to navigate in. Yeah. Well, you were all like, this is awesome. And I'm like, <laughs> oh my gosh, pay attention. And he's like, we need to film this. And I'm like, I don't know if that's a good idea. I had to use GPS just to navigate through the fog. Yeah, it was crazy. Oh my god. <laughs> Winter here is interesting because there will be storms that carry between 40 to 60 knot winds, mm -hmm. but not a lot of snow. This area is a temperate rainforest, but we did get hit with one week of insane snow this year that locals said yeah, was the most snow that they've ever seen. Yeah. And it was awesome. <laughs> it was like a winter wonderland. It was so beautiful. It was really really magical. <laughs> <laughs>
the dogs loved it because it was their first time seeing snow. Yeah, they were hilarious in it. Let's see what he thinks. It seems very curious to go outside. I want to ask you what's next? What do we have coming up here? If folks subscribe and follow our adventure, what are they going to see us doing? this week, next week? Uh, we are building a log cabin, a washroom, and a log cabin guest cabin. So two structures. <laughs> two structures. We're gonna start using some cob for building. Yes, which if you really stick with us, then we were building our permanent house, which will be cob, but that's all I'm gonna say. Uh, I'm really excited about that, to play around with the cob. So yeah. looking back on all this footage, um, honestly brought tears to my eyes, and I'm just so grateful that we're able to video journal this um, to look back on, I mean, it's honestly making me emotional. <laughs> it just gets, it just makes me more motivated and um, I'm just really, really excited to see what the years have for us. So. If folks stick with us, what I want to do is I want to grow a sustainable, edible food forest that's able to feed Nicole and I, friends, family, whoever comes up 100% from here on the property. Yes. And you'll see us build that starting this year. Yes. So gardening will become a crucial component of our videos and channel coming up and everything from processing, dehydrating, harvesting, canning, canning, serving, pickling. Yep. Oh my gosh. They're both doing the stick together. Come on, come on, get a guy. Thank you so much for following our adventure. I'm hoping that a lot of you have always wanted to live off the grid and do some sort of wilderness adventure like what we're doing and hopefully you can get inspired to do so or at least escape through our videos and get those feels inside of you. Yeah. <laughs> a lot more high fives to come as we build an amazing garden, amazing greenhouse, log cabin structure and ultimately a cob house on the other lot that Maybe folks will some see tree us houses. I don't know. Shout out to all you guys. Thanks for becoming our supporters on Patreon. The patrons help to fund our journey. And just interacting here on YouTube and commenting below, hitting the like button, watching our videos as long as you can um, is really important to helping us keep going because it would be so much easier to not make these videos, honestly. Yeah. It doubles our workload to have to video and edit all this. We do it ourselves. And it would be so much easier to just be off the grid for real, throw the cameras away and just live. But we really hope that the byproduct of us videoing is that you guys get inspired and bring some happiness to your life. Yeah. Like always, don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell button so you can get notified and give us a thumbs up. Follow all of our social media on Instagram, Snapchat, and our Patreon. You can mm. find all that down below in the description. Yep, okay, we gotta get back to work. Right. We have a cabin to build. <laughs> <laughs> Like high five. We finished. Ow. Not that aggressive of a high five. Show me how you high five me. You do not high five that way ever. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> no, no. Oh, High fives. High five the trolls. High five. Yeah, high five.